Hi, I'm Lucy Langer. I'm practice president for Compass Oncology and a practicing oncologist for the Compass Oncology West Clinic. Today I'm going to talk about how long is enough. I'm going to talk about anti-estrogen therapies in breast cancer treatment. So first what we're going to do is review the data on endocrine treatment, which is anti-estrogen treatment in breast cancer, and I hope to answer the following questions in this talk. Who needs endocrine therapy? What are the benefits and side effects of endocrine therapy? What is the optimal duration of endocrine therapy for postmenopausal women with breast cancer? And how will I know how long I should be taking anti-estrogen therapies? So first, the estrogen receptors. When we're talking about endocrine therapy, we're talking about estrogen receptors. Estrogen receptors I like to think of like antennas on the outside of a cell. Those antennas are waiting for the right signal to come by, and that signal is estrogen. And when estrogen tags the antenna, it sends a signal into the cell to grow and divide and be a happy cell, which you don't want breast cancer cells to be. So we have some treatments that actually block the estrogen effect on the estrogen receptor. Those treatments include tamoxifen, which I like to think of a key, as a key in a lock. Tamoxifen actually binds the estrogen receptors, like the key in the lock, and prevents estrogen from getting to the receptors and stimulating the cell to grow and be happy. Tamoxifen is the drug that we use primarily in premenopausal women with estrogen-positive breast cancer. We also have aromatase inhibitors. Aromatase inhibitors inhibit the enzyme aromatase, which is found primarily in fatty tissues. And aromatase converts androgens, which are hormones made by your adrenal glands, into estrogens. So postmenopausal women who don't have a large ovarian source of estrogen have androgens that become estrogens in fatty tissues. So the aromatase inhibitors block that hormone, and that hormone is like one of these workers on an assembly line changing androgens into estrogens. So you can think of aromatase inhibitors as breaking down that assembly line. These drugs that block estrogen effect are not without their own side effects. They can include restless sleep, mood changes, weight gain, they can include hot flashes, bone loss, which is important, as well as arthritis or arthralgias, which is an achy feeling, tends to get better the more active you are, but can actually be a real arthritis. These are just some of the side effects of the drugs. So drugs like this that have significant side effects, you always need to ask, how long do we actually need to be treating these cancers, and how long is overtreatment? So the big question today is, how long to treat? So if you look at these two graphs, the graph on the left shows the data that proves that tamoxifen is effective in reducing the risk of cancer recurrence. It's the original study that showed that five years of tamoxifen, compared to no tamoxifen at all, can reduce that risk of recurrence by 30 to 50 percent. It's a very significant effect. The graph on the right shows that in postmenopausal women, if you use the aromatase inhibitors for five years instead of tamoxifen for five years, you can get an even further risk reduction. So for postmenopausal women, if you're going to use only one drug, we prefer an aromatase inhibitor over tamoxifen alone. So this is the graph that I'm going to show throughout this talk. The keys represent tamoxifen, and the blue picture of the assembly line workers represent aromatase inhibitors. You can see that in postmenopausal women, five years of aromatase inhibitors is preferred to five years of tamoxifen. We don't just use five years of either anymore. Sometimes we use what's called a switch strategy. So the graph on the left shows what happens if you use tamoxifen for two to three years, and then you switch to an aromatase inhibitor to finish out another five or six years. Finishing out with a switch strategy actually enhances the use of either drug alone. So if you start on tamoxifen but you become postmenopausal, or you start on tamoxifen to protect your bones, if you're already postmenopausal, after about two to three years, you should consider switching to an aromatase inhibitor because you get an added benefit. On the left, you see a graph from the ATLAS trial. The ATLAS trial was presented at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium in 2012, and it showed that for premenopausal women, after five years of tamoxifen, if you give another five years of tamoxifen, you can further reduce the risk of recurrence 20 years out, and what's most important about the ATLAS trial is it showed a survival benefit. 
So now the standard of care for premenopausal women who start on tamoxifen and are still premenopausal at year five is to continue for a full 10 years. And that's from the ATLAS trial. So here on our graph, you can see the switch strategy with two keys and three aromatase inhibitor pictures. And you can see the 10 years of tamoxifen. So each step along the way, we're making improvements in our treatments of breast cancer. It turns out that you can use the switch strategy for longer. So if you use the switch strategy by starting with five years of tamoxifen, and then you add in five years of an aromatase inhibitor, you can get a slightly better risk reduction than if you use just five years in postmenopausal women. That risk reduction is very, very small, and some would call it negligible. And it turns out that there was a study called the SOUL study that looked at these women that took aromatase inhibitor between years five and 10. And it asked what would happen if these women actually only took the drug for nine months out of every year for the last five years? What would the impact be on their outcome? And it turns out that if you take that drug for nine months out of every year instead of 12 months out of every year for years five through 10, there's absolutely no difference in the outcome. Same rates of recurrence, same overall survival. So there's something about years five through 10 that we don't quite fully understand. Because if you add up the months that are taken away there, you're almost taking away a full year. So this study suggests that nine years is probably as good as 10 years. So there were more studies done. There were studies looking at nine years compared to six years, a study of eight years compared to five years, study of seven and a half years compared to 10 years, and a study of six to eight years compared to 10 to 12 years. And these studies showed that between years six and eight are probably the optimal duration for anti-estrogen therapies for postmenopausal women. That nine years was probably about the same as six years. That eight years was definitely better than five years. That seven and a half years was as good as 10 years. And that between six and eight years is also as good as 10 years. So here's the table showing all of these studies. And I will point out that in the years 7.5 and the six, six to eight year studies, they looked at what happened in the first five years too. You could take five years of tamoxifen, you could take five years of an aromatase inhibitor, or you could take the switch strategy, which is two years of tamoxifen followed by three years of aromatase inhibitor. And it turns out that somewhere between years six and eight is the optimal duration. So what does this all mean for you personally? Well, we know that five years of an aromatase inhibitor is better than five years of tamoxifen. So if you're low risk and you're postmenopausal and you have good bones, starting on an aromatase inhibitor is perfectly acceptable and taking it for five years is perfectly acceptable. If you have osteopenia, you might want to start on tamoxifen and pursue a switch strategy because we know that the switch strategy gives you a little bit of an advantage. And if you're premenopausal, you should consider 10 full years of tamoxifen therapy if you're in an intermediate or high risk category, which most premenopausal women fall into that category. We know that 10 years in postmenopausal women gives a very slight edge over five, but we also know that taking years five through 10 intermittently instead of continuously is no different. So if you're in years five through 10 and you go on a vacation and you forget your medication, it's probably okay. And then finally, nine years is as good as six, eight is better than five, 7.5 and six to eight are, are just as good as 10. So now if your doctor told you that you need to go to year 10, you can come back and say, how about if we negotiate for seven and a half years? So let's not forget the side effects of these medications. The experts say that there's really probably no benefit to continuing therapy beyond seven, seven and a half years that we should consider extended therapy in women who are at high initial risk and women who also tolerated initial endocrine therapy, because if you didn't tolerate the first five years, the second five years, or the second two and a half years might be unpleasant. 
And patients who are at lower risk of recurrence probably would suffer more from the side effects than they would gain from the benefit of extending endocrine therapy. So I hope that helps you in your future conversations with your physician. And thank you very much for your time. For more information, visit compassoncology.com.